life has been lifing, not even lifing. Life has been beating me and bringing me down every other week of the month, not even of the month. Um, life has just been heavy on me since December. Um, definitely not ready to share most of what happened during that time and even now, but um, if there's anything I have been tested in, this um, topic that we'll be discussing today is just basically the best or the most fitting topic to talk about at this moment. So, Hey there, welcome to Adulting with Honey. I'm your host, Honey, and this is episode two of Adulting with Honey. And today we are going to talk about how to detach to distress. Unfortunately, stress is just one of those things that as much as we would like to avoid them, um, we can just do so much. So uh, I'm actually glad that I went through what I've been going through the past few days and I am able to share with y'all what I'm going to share with you guys today um, because everything that I'll be sharing really um, came into play for me. It really helped me a lot during these tough times and it helped me stay sane and, and, and it helped really put me in a better mental space his despite uh, despite everything I was going through so um yeah uh let's hop into it so we are going to look at ways to detach and then we're also going to look at ways to distress from stress so um number one let's look at ways to detach one of the first thing that I would say really helped me and it's going to be really helpful is self-isolation and wait, hold the brakes. I know when you hear about self-isolation, immediately you are thinking locking yourself up in a room or in a closet and not coming out until you have lost weight or you look miserable or whatever. But um, in this case, what I'm talking about when I'm saying you need to self-isolate is no, just taking time, go on walks and be by yourself. Take time and just spend the whole weekend by yourself, not talking to anyone, just you and your thoughts without anyone distracting you. And I know that this is not an easy thing to do for most people, especially if you're somebody that's living around the people that are giving you the stress that you need to detach from, especially if you're somebody that's still living under their parents' roof and your parents are the ones, you know, putting you in situations that make you feel like you need to self-isolate. So uh, it really becomes hard to self-isolate. In that case, I would just say, go in the bathroom and just lock the bathroom and be there for a while, you know, sit with your thoughts. Um, for me, self-isolation was really helpful because it allowed me to take a step back and then it helped create a personal space and it helped me recalibrate my thoughts and it also provided for me much needed clarity, which leads us into the next way of how to detach and that is identifying the source of your stress. You can't really fix a problem if you don't know what it is, right? You can't go fix a car that's broken if you don't know what's broken. You really can't help yourself emotionally if you don't know what is causing you the stress. You don't, you don't know why you are stressed or you don't know why you are feeling the way that you are. Self-isolation just really helps provide you that mental clarity that will help you identify what is causing you the stress and why you are feeling the way that you are feeling. So um, understanding what's causing you the turmoil enables you to address the root of your stress effectively. If you know why you are stressing or why you are feeling a certain type of way, it's easier to know how to deal with the situation or how to confront the person that's making you feel that way and by confronting I'm not saying going out there speaking to the person although it's important at this stage now that's not where I'm at right now right now I'm just talking about you yourself within yourself identifying I am angry or I am feeling this way because Hani said this to me and these words that Hani used on me are really making me feel uncomfortable they are giving me a lot of stress and I'm not happy because Hani said this. So that's what I mean by identifying the source of your stress. Now let's move on to point number three of how to detach and that is knowing emotions are temporary. Knowing that whatever emotion that you are feeling right now it's going to come and go. It's not there to stay. It's not a permanent emotion. It's just an emotion that you are feeling right now. 
it's not permanent. It's a temporary emotion. Emotions are transits. They come and they go. And then realizing this importance allows us to detach from overwhelming feelings and maintain a balanced perspective because you know that I'm only feeling what I'm feeling now. It's not going to last. It's a feeling that I'm going to have for the next few days, for the next one hour, 30 minutes, however long it's going to take. But it's not a long lasting emotion and it's going to go away eventually. Number four leads us into identifying triggers and taking responsibility. Sometimes all these emotions or all this stress not the first time that we're feeling that emotion, right? And it's not going to be the last time that we're feeling that emotion. But there are certain things that when somebody says them to us, they are going to make us upset. And when somebody does that thing to us, they are going to make us upset. So yes, there are things that people are going to say or do that are going to catch us off guard and get us into a space where we are stressed or we are emotionally unwell and all of that. And we have no control over that. Right? But it's also important to identify things that we have control over. So some people know for a fact, like, if you dare say anything about my mother, I'm going to come for you. You know that that's bigger for you. And you also know that there's a traumatic situation that happened to you that you know for a fact that if somebody was to bring that up, it's going to trigger you or it's going to make you feel a certain type of way. Being proactive and identifying what these situations are for you are going to help you be able to identify that, okay, this is a trigger for me, so I'm going to take myself out of this situation. Or um, when somebody says this to me, I need to think of it this way to help you already know that when this happens, I'm going to react this way and I need to take responsibility. You can't control what people are going to say to you. The only thing that you can control is how you react to the way that they make you feel or to a situation that you are in. For example, you know that you will be stressed if you come to the middle of the month and you don't have money every month they are having financial stress because they are overspending or they don't spend their money well and so they kind of have stress you know for a fact that when you come to the middle of the month and you don't have taxi money to go to work that triggers you and it puts you in a situation of stress it becomes important for you to take responsibility of the fact that you know that if you don't spend your money wisely you are going to be stressed by the time Mid month comes and you do not have money. So yes, it becomes your responsibility to make sure that you're going to spend your money wisely or you're going to put money away for transport to make sure that by the time you get to the middle of the month, you have transport money and you do not have to worry about that. That's you taking responsibility of something that always triggers stress in you. Or yeah. And then another this, uh, situation can be like um, you have this ex into a relationship because I love talking about relationship and y'all know this about me already, right? So you have this individual that you are dating and one thing that stresses you about them is expectation. You're always putting all these expectations on this person, expecting them to do A, B, C, and D. Maybe it's to improve their own you know, lifestyle or to help themselves improve themselves or it's a situation, it's an expectation of something that you want them to do for you that they don't. And so this whole thing is stressing you. You are in this relationship that you are always stressed about. So it's your responsibility to take a seat back and look at why am I putting expectations on this person? Why am I just not calling my losses knowing that honey is unable to do that? And unfortunately, I'm in a relationship with honey. So it's my responsibility to decide that, okay, honey doesn't want to do this or honey doesn't want to act a certain way. So I'm going to walk away because I do not want to be stressed about honey. Or I'm going to live with honey and I'm going to remove all these expectations from honey because honey is incapable of doing those things and it stresses me. So I'm just not going to put those expectations on her and that way I'm not going to be stressed about honey. So those are just ways of identifying things that are triggering you and then taking responsibility. So this empowers us to control our reactions and they foster a proactive approach to stress. 
So we have uh, identified ways of detaching from stress by self-isolating, which allows us to take a step back, create personal space, and recalibrate our thoughts and provide much-needed clarity. Um, and then we spoke about identifying of sources of stress, right? This helps us understand what's causing the stress, and it enables us to address the root of our issues more effectively. And then we talked about knowing that emotions are temporary. They are not permanent. They are not here to stay. In doing so, we are allowing ourselves to detach from overwhelming feelings and also maintain a balanced perspective. We are able to know, you know, this is what the world thinks about me or this is what honey thinks about me. But that's not necessarily true. We also looked at identifying triggers and uh, and taking responsibilities. This really helps us with empowering us to take control of our reactions and then foster a proactive approach to stress. Now, we've detached from our stress, but now how do we deal with this stress that we are feeling? How do we deal with these emotions that we are feeling? And number one is controlling our reaction. If I can tell you the number of times that I did not control myself about how I felt in a situation, I reacted right away and then I just went back and I was like, oh my goodness, I needed to take time to think about this before I reacted the way that I reacted. When something happens to you, you have exactly three seconds, even five at most, to just um, control what's going to happen next to just think about what you're going to do next. And that will be the most important part of of, of, of how you're going to feel for the next one month, one year, one week, one hour, three hours, however long that you're going to be dealing with that situation. That is the most controlling point of how you're going to feel right after that person said or did whatever they did to you. So... You need to be able to control your reaction. Stressful situations are inevitable, okay? But we have to control our reactions. Choosing how we respond will empower how to navigate the challenges. Let's think about this, right? I'm in a situation. Uh, guys, so much has happened right now. And I'm really holding back from using examples of situations that happened to me right now because... I don't think I'm ready to talk about the situations at all, so, um, okay, sorry, but, uh, it's just, it's taking me back so far that, yeah, it, I'm getting a little emotional, but I'm not gonna do that, so, um, let's just say, you, somebody says something to you, right, and you have literally those three seconds that I was talking about to decide if you are gonna throw a fist if you are going to fight them, if you are going to say something to them, or if you are going to look inside and take a, a kind of ownership of your emotions and decide what to do, whether it's to walk away, whether it's to talk back to them in a much more calmer tone than a harsh tone. You have literally that little amount of time to just take to control how you are going to react to a situation and definitely how you react to situations is going to determine how you're going to feel in the next one hour, how many long. So you could react to a situation by saying, you know what, that's what they think and that is not what I think about myself. So I'm not going to take what they said seriously. I'm going to take it with like a grain of salt. And I'm going to walk away. That's one way that you can react. And then you walk away and you are able to avoid a stressful situation gracefully. And you don't have to go think about it again because you are so confident in yourself that you know that sometimes people are going to say something because of how they are feeling themselves. They are projecting their emotions onto you. It has nothing to do with you but everything to do with them. That's one scenario. But there could also be the situation where you react. Now, this person says something to you that you're uncomfortable with or you are not happy with and you fight back. You say things that you're not going to be happy about with later that you're going to sit with yourself and be like, why Why did I have to say that? Or why did I have to step 
that look. So now you are spending 30 minutes thinking of what you could have said instead, why you, you had reacted that way. In another situation, this is probably an extreme situation, you fight back. And then this person decides to call the police on you. Now you are arrested and you are sitting in prison for a year or even longer because either you ended up killing someone or you ended up um, causing bodily harm on someone. So these are things that can all come out of being unable to control our emotions and, and our reactions to what situations that were stressful. Moving on, another way on how to de-stress is practicing detaching from emotions. So earlier we said um, isolate yourself and identify your sources of stress, but now we are saying being proactive about detaching from emotions. I kind of touched on this one slightly earlier, but it's basically allowing yourself to observe feelings without being overwhelmed or looking at this is what Hannah says or did to me and that has nothing to do with me. Okay, that is how Hannah is feeling and Hannah is projecting her emotions onto me. So how you can do this is going back into your own head, telling yourself that you know what? I am feeling this way right now, right? This is how I am feeling, but I don't want to feel that. I'm going to do something else that's going to make me feel better and not feel that way. One way that I detach from those type of emotions is going to bed, taking my laptop, putting on a movie, putting my shits over my head, and then just going to bed. That's another way that you can also help yourself detach. Another way that you can also do this is um, meditate. If you don't know how to meditate, there's a lot of YouTube videos that can walk you through how to meditate. And there's a lot of spaces that you can learn how to meditate. But um, I was not somebody that used to, you know, meditate. I was just like, what the heck? Like, what? Why? But um, since I've gotten into doing it, it has changed my life drastically. Like, I, I, I can't even imagine, like... How was I living like how was I living my life without meditation? Like, whoa, honey, how how were you doing that? Like, yeah. So um really meditating has helped me a lot with detaching from emotions. And meditating just allows us to observe our feelings without being overwhelmed by them and, and it also fosters um emotional resilience. Now let's look into a third way on how to de-stress and that is letting go of control. You can't be in control of every situation. As much as you'd love to control every situation and every feeling that you are feeling and controlling how people are going to act or like, I'm not going to go there because so and so is going to be there and they just give me stress. So I'm not going to go there, right? Yes, that's something that you can control. But there are situations that you can't control, especially if you are living with your parents. Like I'm speaking to that person right now. And then to say that, hey, you can't control how your mother is going to wake up. You can't control how your mother is dealing with her stress. Only thing that you can control is how you deal with her. Controlling your emotions, knowing that, listen, this is my mother. Sometimes she wakes up very angry and she says things that are mean to me and even, in, even when I tell her that these things are mean, she'll keep repeating them and she'll keep doing it anyways. That's just her. And I'm in this situation that um, as much as I would love to control it, I cannot control it. And it's either I removed myself from that situation. That means moving out of your parents' house, I'm going to stay in your own space if you can afford to. But if you can, it means you accept that that's who they are doesn't mean that they are the best person and it doesn't mean that what they're doing is right. But you accepting that this is who my mother is. Sometimes she wakes up with this mood swings and today she woke up with that mood swing. So I just need to deal with it best way I can by controlling my reactions, by detaching, by self-isolating all the things that we spoke about earlier on how to detach, right? So, um, doing one of those things is going to help me. So I'm just going to uh, do that and ignore her because unfortunately this is a situation that I'm in and I can't control it. So I'm going to have to accept it. Another thing on um, letting go of control, it's also just knowing that 
some things you really can't change. You can't change everything. In fact, you can't even change yourself. There are things about yourself that you can't change, that you have been trying to change. So what makes you think that you are in control of everything else and you can go change everyone else and change how everybody else is reacting and talking? You can't control things that are out of your hand. The only things that you can control are things that are within your your hands. I mean, when you are going through these situations, just being able to sit and ask yourself, is there something I can do about this? Is there something that I can do to change this situation? And if there is, go ahead and do the thing. But if there's nothing that you can do about it, if you're asking yourself, is there something that I can do? And you're like, no, it's out of my control. I can't, there's nothing I can do about it. Then we just accept that that's what it is. Like you can't change it. You can't change everything. And some things are really just out of your control. You accept that it is what it is and you move on from it. And I know it is hard to say that like, no, I can just move on. I need to fight. No, unfortunately, it was out of your control. What are you going to do about it? Hmm? There's nothing you can do about it. Moving on on another way of how to de-stress and stay tuned also. I have three other uh, bonus points on how to de-stress. So, um, Stay tuned. <laughs> okay, moving on on uh, other ways on how to de-stress and we're going to look at practicing forgiveness. And oh my God. Is forgiveness not the most hardest thing that you're going to do? And as easy as it sounds and you think about forgiveness and you think it's saying, hey, I'm sorry. And, and, and that's it, right? It, it, it's literally three words. I am sorry. Three words right that's what forgiveness is it's asking for forgiveness or, 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 or giving yourself the forgiveness telling yourself that i need to forgive myself for um the way that i reacted you know or for the way um uh, yeah for the way that i reacted i need to forgive myself for that right it sounds so easy it sounds like uh, all i have to say is just uh, i'm sorry honey um i'm gonna do better by myself i'm gonna do better by you right it sounds that easy but it's not forgiveness it's really hard and sometimes somebody can come asking you for forgiveness and you feel like ah whatever like you know it's hard to forgive them and you're just like yeah no i don't feel like you are sorry i don't feel like i want to forgive you because your apology is not genuine or i'm not pleased with your apology the thing about forgiveness is that as hard as it might sound to forgive yourself for something or to forgive others from something, you have to remember that forgiveness is a powerful thing for distressing. When you forgive someone, there's just so much weight that comes off from you. And sometimes forgiving others is not necessarily for them. When you are taking an ex uh, when you are accepting an apology from someone. Yes, it might make them feel better about themselves and about what they did to you, but there's nothing that feel more, that that feels better than letting go of a situation that made you feel some type of stress or some type of emotion that you didn't like. When you forgive yourself or forgive others, that's the best feeling in the world. And genuinely forgiving and forgetting. And I know that people are gonna come here and be like, what? You can forgive, but you don't have to forget. And I know that that is what is preached. And that is what the most advice that you're going to hear about this is that people are going to tell you to forgive people and not forget what they did to you. And I don't see how when you forgive someone and you are still holding on to it or the thing that they did to you, you're not forgetting about what they did to you. Like, how does that clear your mental space? Like, you are still thinking about the thing, right? It's still in the back of your mind. I know this is going to be a controversial, con 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 eh? an unpopular opinion. This is going to, this is about to be the most unpopular opinion. But if you are going to forgive someone, you need to forget about it, right? If forgiveness means forgetting, and I know that a lot of people are going to be here saying that, Forgiveness is not about forgetting. You can forgive someone, but still remember what they did to you. But if you're forgiving someone and you are still thinking about what they did to you, have you really forgiven them? Hmm? Did you forgive them? 
Because I don't think so. If you're forgiving someone, you're forgiving them because you don't want to feel the stress or you don't want to feel the anger that you had towards the situation or the person, right? So if you are still thinking about it, if you are not forgetting about it, if it's always going to be in the back of your mind, how are you distressing? How are you uh, uh, making sure that it doesn't keep popping up in your mind at random times and making you angry all over again, right? So for me, I believe in forgiving and forgetting. And yes, sometimes it's going to come and stick uh, and step you in the bag. And unfortunately, that's just life. Like I said, we can't control everything. We have to let go of control, right? If you want to live a peaceful life, if you want to live a happy life, you need to learn how to forgive people and to move past um, um, situations. Because if you can't move past the situation, there's no way that you're not going to be stressed about it. You will still be stressed about it regardless because you can't move past it. So um, for me, really, as hard as it sounds, I, and I'm not going to lie, even with this strategy, I have been in situations where I have forgiven somebody for something Totally forgot about it even because for me, forgiveness means forgetting about it. Like I forgive and I move on. So I forget about it. But somebody's going to look at this and think I'm lying about it or so. I know and I understand, but um, I'm probably talking about it for the longest now because really this is the one thing that I'm practicing. But I'm, I've also noticed that it has not necessarily been the best practice. Yes, I have forgiven people and they have repeatedly hurt me and they have repeated their actions towards me because I forgive and I forget and then when they do it again I'm like ah oh, they did it again or sometimes I'm like I forget that they had done it before and I just forgive them again and we move past it I was in a situation where somebody did something to me I forgive them and I moved past it but then they went and did it again. But in that moment, I didn't even remember. Like, I could not remember that this person had done this before. And I was with a very close person. I don't want to see their relationship to me because then it's going to bring um, kind of like um, y'all will know, like, who I'm talking about or what the situation was. Like, people might know. So um, I'm not going to see this person's relationship to me, but... Uh, this person points it out to me and they're like, well, this is not the first time that they did this to you. Do you remember that and that and that and that, right? So you, sometimes, yes, you do need friends in your life that remind you of these situations. And that's why you always find people to vent to, to talk to about how you are feeling and all of that. But we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, but um, that situation happened and this person so gracefully reminded me, this is not the first time. Uh, this person is doing this to you. Do you remember when they did A, B, C, and D? And I was like, oh, yeah. But um, I wasn't angry. Um, I didn't get angry all over again. I was just like, oh, yeah, me. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to forgive them. But yeah, I, I, at least now I know that it's not the first time that they did it. I don't know. People, people like to say I am a blonde by being blonde. Um, I don't know how to, not blonde to say that I'm a white person with um, white hair, but um, people say I'm blonde, you know, like um, the blonde girl from Mean Girls. <laughs> yeah, the blonde girl from Mean Girls, that type of blonde. And um, honestly speaking, although it can be a disadvantage at times, for me, I feel like it's a, it's a blessing in disguise for me because sometimes I go through things and I just don't realize how severe they are. I let go so easily, like, you can do something to me now and 30 minutes later, I'm, I'm okay and I'm willing to move past it and be friends with you and I'm not going to treat you any different from how I was treating you before and... It's a blessing, but it can also be a case. Forgiveness, it's a personal choice of how you decide to deal with it. If you are somebody that's able to forgive someone and not forget about it and still live peacefully, stress-free, and it's it's not in the back of your mind every day, but it does come up whenever you are dealing with them, like, kudos to you. But um, forgiving and forgetting for me has also been a big blessing because um, I'm able to treat people how I'd want them to treat me, whether they have done or did not do what they did to me. I'm able to 
forgive people and move past situations without holding a grudge towards them. And yeah, I, I love that for me. <laughs> we talk so much about forgiveness. Let's talk about positive self-talk. Whether you like it or not, the way that you're going to talk to yourself, and I'm going to say this again, the way that you talk to yourself is going to shape your mindset. Somebody says something to you, of you uh, or, or you are stressed about something and then you start talking down on yourself, right? Because they're like, you're so stupid. Like, how could you have done that? You're so silly. Like, you are, you are dumb. Like, you know, I can't think of more negative things to say that are going to be podcast friendly or, or you know, advertiser friendly. <laughs> We're in that era now, you know, but um, the moment you start calling yourself all this, negative things, the moment you start down talking on yourself, the moment you start calling yourself the words that everybody is calling you, then you are shaping your mindset in a negative way, right? Now you are drilling it into your mind that honey is stupid, honey is what, 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 honey is what, 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 all those things, right? And that cannot do you any good. It will just keep breaking you. It will just keep harming you. So the next time somebody says something negative to you or the next time that you do something that is stressful or that is putting you in, uh, your, 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 it's bringing your mental health down or whatever, the next time you end up in that situation, think about all the positive things that you can say to yourself. Yes, it's a mistake, but you are a smart girl and you know how to get yourself out of this situation. You are not going to do it again. Next time the situation comes up, you are going to react with grace. You're going to be peaceful about it. And this is life, honey. Things like this happen. And yeah, saying positive affirmations to yourself and giving yourself constructive self-criticism and giving yourself constructive dialogue. You create a more optimistic internal environment for yourself. Your thoughts or whatever environment that you're sitting with you know, within yourself on the inside. It's going to be so positive and you're going to be a positive person. Know that the power of what other people say to you is just as powerful as what you say to yourself. If you are being negative to yourself and then somebody says something negative to you that you have said to yourself, you start thinking that that is true and that is who you are. But that is just the power of words. Being kind with yourself. Speak with yourself in a kindly manner. Speak to yourself like how you would love somebody to speak with you. Yeah. Next point, the bonus points. There's three bonus points of how to distress yourself. And that is working out. Okay. Work out. You guys, go on a nature walk. Go on a jog. Oh, my God. Now, me that I... I'm recording this in my new space now, and I cannot begin to tell you how much working out, taking my puppy, if you don't know this, I have a puppy scarlet, taking her on nature works and going on a jog, or sometimes just pulling out my workout mat and doing some more pilates. I just love working out. It really helps me with this dressing. Sometimes I can be crying about something. Yes, I'm that girl. <laughs> I know. You guys, sometimes I feel like my life is a movie now, but... Um, yeah, so sometimes I'll be stressed with tears running down my eyes and I'll go on a walk or I'll go on a jog. And research has shown that engaging in regular physical activities, whether it's a bit of a walk or a gym session, is a proven method of alleviating stress and boosting overall well-being. So, yeah, you should try it out. Bonus point number two, and that is praying, worshipping, or uplifting music. So pray, guys. Pray. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Like I keep preaching prayer and uh, I can't imagine the times I just sat and I spoke to God and I just told him and I gave him everything. I put my whole stress on him. And after that, um, after I was done praying, I felt like a lot of weight lifted from me. Like, yeah, if you are not Christian, if you are not somebody that believes in praying and maybe you believe in some other type of higher power that can be some you are Muslim or you are whatever other religion that you are, however you guys practice praying, just 
take the moment to do that. Maybe, oh, what is it? You, you speak with your ancestor. Go sit and talk to your ancestors. Even not just praying, but like listening to praise and worship and just singing and praising and worshiping. Like it has been so helpful. And another way I also do that is through listening to music. Like I remember I was going through this other breakup song. <laughs> Not song, but I was going through a breakup point in once upon a time in my life. <laughs> I was going through a breakup and I was listening to this song. This is a shout out to my ex. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but it's a song by Little Mix. Shout out to my ex. Oh my goodness. That song. And it's not even just that. Um, another song I was also listening to when I was going through a breakup is I'm a Little Mix girl like this when And <laughs> yeah, these are old songs, but um, there's a song by Little Mix that says Sweet Melody. I'm not going to try to sing that one because uh, yeah, I just proved myself I can't sing. But Sweet Melody by Little Mix. Oh my God. <laughs> Songs that have been with me through my breakup. There's actually a new song now that I'm listening to as well. Spella Mia. Bella. B-L-L-A-H-Y. Mia. M-A-E. On purpose. Oh, wow, that song. Okay. Um, yeah, for me, music is just um, something that helps me with whatever times I'm going through in my life. I can listen to music. I don't know how to sing or anything like that, but um, I like to sing along and be crazy. So to conclude, I'd like to say that the journey for distress ends with being intentional about detaching. And by incorporating the strategies that I just shared with you in our lives, we empower ourselves to not only weather the storms and the bad days and the down days, but it also gives us the power to emerge stronger and be more resilient the next time these situations bring themselves up again. Thank you for joining us for this exploration of how to detach in today's stress. If you would like to join our community and take part in deciding what topic to talk about next, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Click that link to the WhatsApp group where I share the ideas of the next topics that I want to talk about and then you guys can engage. And sometimes you guys can also give me suggestions of topics and you help kind of direct the way in which that podcast is going to go. So um, if you'd like to join the community, the WhatsApp link is down below. Click on it and join. And yes, um, don't worry. It's a broadcast channel, meaning we are not going to have people flooding your uh, inbox with comments or spams or advertisements or anything like that. Um, I make sure to create an environment where that is not the case so um it's basically really just going to be about the podcast we're going to share ideas about the podcast and you can help um help shape the the podcast and the episodes that we are going to be talking about so i encourage you to share your thoughts and expectations in the comment section down below and also let's build a community focused on well-being and resilience so until next time stay empowered and live a stress-free life Bye.